Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining in for today's talk and our prayer is today that this talk will encourage you and that God will speak to you through it. And I do want to say you got to subscribe to this YouTube channel right now if you want to see more stuff like this, all the latest content coming out. And also, don't forget, check out our website, myhopecity.cc and connect with us on Facebook by liking our page, Hope City Efton, and joining our Facebook groups. Again, thank you so much for joining us and I can't wait to see how God is going to speak to you through this talk. I'm excited today. Are you excited for our message? I hope you're as excited as I am. And I just got to say, it is, uh, I love worshiping God, and I thank God for my alone times of worship, but there is something about being in a room with a bunch of people worshiping God together, and uh, I, I just love it, and so I was excited, obviously, having a very small group here the last couple weeks, uh, just to be able to come together in God's house and worship Him. Let's pray this prayer together. Say, God, I'm open. God, I'm ready. Speak to me now. Uh, it, was, it was the year 2004, uh, I know our youth have gone out, so most of us, we are old enough maybe somewhat to remember that, our four-year-olds at the time in the front row, uh, but 2004, uh, many of us remember, but I, I was doing a little research and trying to find this out, but, but they say there was a, a group of guys, a group of Harvard uh, grad students. And they were at their ski house on the weekend. So just get this picture with me, okay? You got, you, you know, like Harvard grad students at their ski house, you know, for the weekend. And, and they used this phrase over and over with this group of people that uh, it was a phrase that kind of they used in their circle as I, I've tried to figure it out. And, and it was this phrase or word you can maybe say, and it was phobo, which was the fear of better options. So just picture that irony with me for a minute, like Harvard grad students, and they're at their ski house, and they're all the time talking about a, a fear of better options. And I was doing a little research, and it was actually one of those weekends that they, they kind of got talking about, it, and they're like, well, you know, it's not really about better options. It, it, it's more than that. And, and it was then that the phrase was coined, and later in 2010, it became a part of kind of the urban dictionary, but this phrase of... FOMO, fear of missing out. That same year, 2004, there was another student and he was working on a social media platform and that social media platform uh, really was all about rating students, rating students and at the time it was rating them based on their appearance, based on their looks and that social media platform or that gentleman would eventually create what we know as today Facebook. Obviously, it's changed quite a bit since then, but uh, we live in this world today, and it goes all the way back, but we see it throughout time that we're always comparing. We're always comparing one another. We're always comparing ourselves to other people, and, and we see it even more so in our culture today. Now, we go all the way back, even Elijah that we've been looking at in this series, that when, when he was really at a low, low moment in his life, one of the things that he would say to God is, I'm no better than my ancestors. And so this idea of comparison has always been around, but it just seems in the last 20 years or so that it, that it has just been at an all-time heightened level. And we think about it, we're like, I, I don't know, let, let me just for a moment just give you a, a little bit of, of history. So in my younger life, or in my, at least half of my life, when you thought of comparison, it was like a moment in time, like I, I, I went to my buddy's house and he shows me his new car. And so, you know, right away you're a little bit envious and you're like, man, I wish I had that car. And you, you leave that setting and you're like, oh. I want that, like, like, look at my piece of junk, or, or, you know, maybe it was someone would tell you about the trip they went on, and you'd be hanging out at their house on the weekend, and they'd be like, yeah, we just got back, and we went here, went there, and you would leave, and you'd be like, man, I never get to do that sort of thing, and, you know, maybe it was the Siler house, or maybe it was their promotion at work, and so, you know, you'd hear about it, or it was maybe a promotion you would have liked to have but that moment it happened and then it was over and today it is very 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 different you see today as a result of social media we know everyone's life all the time 
We no longer are just comparing moments and settings at a certain time in our week or our, our day, but we literally are comparing all the time. Like, I don't just know your vacation when you get back and I'm at your house and you're telling me about it. I know about your vacation the entire time you're on vacation. And as soon as I get done knowing about your vacation, I know about his vacation. And, and, and all the time I'm seeing everyone's life and I know all about their perfect kids, right? Like, I, I see, man, I wish my kids were like that. Or I wish my spouse was that spouse. Well, not that spouse, but like that spouse. And, and, and you're, you're all the time living in this world of comparison constantly over and over and over again we compare as we see people's lives we see their promotion we we see all the good in in their life and not only that we start to put things on social media and we we know how many people like our life we literally can see and and then all of a sudden some of you especially our younger generation maybe a lot of today will be towards the young adults, but it affects all of us. It's like we, we know how many people liked our post, but then we also know how many like their post. And we start to compare and, well, well why didn't they like mine as much as they like theirs? And, and, and then not only that, now, now there's something else we'll find ourselves comparing, is how many followers we have. How, how many followers do you guys have on social media? It's like, see, they know right away. The young adults, they, they just know. I don't have any idea, but, but there's, there's this whole mindset now. It's like, I know how many people I have that, that are following me, or I know how many I'm following, and all the time we are in constant comparison. Here's the thing about comparison. Comparison will lead to two, one of two things. It will lead either to pride, or it will lead to envy. Comparison will lead to pride, or it will lead to envy. And, and today we're talking about the killer called comparison. The killer called comparison. Now, uh, please know this today, that there, there are good types of pride, okay? That there are good types of pride that sometimes we think, well, the Bible says, you know, that, that we shouldn't be proud. And so there's nothing I should, should be or can be proud about. No, that is very wrong. But there is, there is good pride. A couple places that we would see, uh, the first one would be, it's okay to be proud of your accomplishments. I, you can be proud of your accomplishments. And, and, and it, you know, if you work hard at something and, and you're being diligent and you understand, you know, still like, God, God you've given me the ability here, but, but I'm going to put in my effort and my energy, you can be proud of that. There, there's nothing wrong with that type of pride. It, it, if you're, you know, a part of CR or you're uh, overcoming addictions or things in your past and, it, you know, you, you make it so many months and make it a year, two years, that is something you should be proud about. All right? So there, there's types of pride that, that is okay. Galatians says this. It says each one should test their own action. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. So what did it say? It said you can take pride. You actually can take pride in, in yourself, that, that that's okay. Another area that pride can be good is it's okay to be, to be proud of others. That, that, that is okay to, to be proud of others. That hopefully, if you have children today, you encourage them and you are proud of them. And if they work hard and they put in two weeks of homeschool or three weeks or whatever it is, that, that we can be proud about those things. That we can be proud in our accomplishments ourselves. We can be proud in others. Second Corinthians says this. Paul's writing and, and we see the confidence or pride that he has in other people. He says, I have the highest confidence in you and I take great pride in you you have greatly encouraged me and made me happy despite all of our troubles you see a good pride it's not an arrogant pride it, it's not a, a sinful pride but then the bible will teach us that there is a thing called a sinful pride that that a proud spirit is very 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 wrong the thing about comparison and the pride that it brings, it leads us to what we would call, the Bible would talk about as being sinful. Proverbs 16, 18 says this, it says, Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness 
before a fall. Proverbs 8.13 says, To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. A sinful pride... I know there's a lot, note takers, you're, you're writing a lot today, but, but a sinful pride, this is how, how you, you can kind of tell if something is, is a sinful pride or it starts to go a sinful way, is that, that it will actually give you a false sense of godliness. That, that if in your spirit you kind of feel better than other people, like I am more godly than other people, I am more holy than other people, you, you can pretty well be sure that at the root there there is some sinful pride it, it can also just give you a, a false sense of accomplishment or or just kind of this feeling like yeah I, I i'm great like look at me like man if every husband was like me this world would be great right like, like it, this whole idea like no yeah I, i'm i'm really something I, i'm really really got this all together the thing is with the sinful pride and when we compare ourselves by ourselves and we end up with a proud spirit, the amazing thing is this, people that go that route still very often lack contentment. Even that feeling doesn't give them this feeling of just peace and rest. Another thing that pride or comparison will do, sorry, but comparison will lead to envy. So on one side, it, it leads to a proud and haughty spirit. On the other side, it will actually lead us into a place of, of envy. And both, can, both are wrong. Both are displeasing to God. Both dishonor God. Proverbs 14.30 says this, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. In 2 Corinthians, the writer would write, he says, We do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. We've been talking the last few weeks about our mind cave. And the whole idea is a lot of us Today, we battle what we would refer to as really a cave in our mind. The way I would describe it is just the, it, you can't really explain it, but in your thoughts and your alone time, and even when you're not alone, it, it's like your, your mind is just kind of takes you to this dark place, this, this depressing place. And we would call that today, you, you battle your struggle with your mental health. And, and I've just got a feeling as I've been looking at this and researching and, and saying, well, how come we're sort of at, at a heightened level of depression and, and more people battling with mental health than ever before? Like, like, what are some things? And I'm just telling you, I believe that one of the things is comparison. Constantly living a life in comparison to everyone else. Comparison goes all the way back, though. It's not new. We, we mentioned that Elijah dealt with it, but you can go way back in the beginning. Like, like right in the very beginning when God created everything, we, we see that, that comparison was there. Even, even the garden and the tree, that, that how did the serpent tempt Eve? He, he goes and it's like, hey, you could be like God. And, and right away it's just this comparison trap of like, well, yeah, I would like to be like him comparison and as you just start to go through the bible after adam and eve they begin to have children and they would have cain and abel they, they're two children cain the the firstborn and and abel the, the second born and and we read about their story and so cain he would he would kind of be in charge of the the land and and the soil the the trees the produce and and then abel would be in charge of all the livestock all of their animals and and so you have the these two children the first children and, and this is their life and then we're going to pick up and i want to read all the way back in genesis chapter 4 verse 3 to 8 it says in the course of time cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the lord and abel also brought an offering fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock and the lord looked with favor, favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, 
he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. I, I don't believe for a mo- moment that, that we, we read this story and it was just literally like just moments in, in a day and in time that it's just like, you know, one brought in their offering and right beside him the other one came and God's just like, here you go and, and I'm going to show favor on this guy and not on you. I, I don't believe that really was the case. I, we don't know exactly though what was going on. I, I, I don't know what that favor was. The Bible doesn't tell us that, that this is how God showed favor. This is how God blessed. We don't know that. But, but all of a sudden we will see, we will see what? Comparison step into the picture. All of a sudden we're going to see that, that Cain, he begins to see Abel being blessed of God, the favor of God on his life and what? Cain starts to compare. He's angry. He's upset. My younger brother is being blessed. My younger brother is finding favor with God. And and so God, he steps into the picture and he says to Cain, verse 6, Why are you angry and why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? If you do what's right, Cain, like, like don't, don't be looking at, at him. Don't, don't look to your left. Don't look to your right. But, but Cain, if you do what's right, if you, you do what you should do, will you not be accepted? But then he says this. He says, but if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. The Lord warns Cain, there's a killer in his comparison. It'll lead to sin, and it's crouching at the very door of your life. Now Cain said to his brother, let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him comparison is a killer in this story in the bible we see that it literally ended up in a person's life being taken as a result of what comparison simply comparing what they had and 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 someone else and what i have and literally led to someone being killed but i'm telling you for many of us We struggle today with comparison. And for many of us in our minds, in our thoughts, we don't even know why. And we find ourselves in this dark cave and and we can't seem to get out. And I just have a question for you. How often are you comparing your life to other people? You see, if you live on social media and you're there all the time, you can't help it. You are comparing yourself to other people. All the time, every day of your life. Comparing, comparing comparing so how is it that we could actually maybe get out of of this trap called comparison or get away from this killer called comparison or how is it that if we battle with this in our minds and we end up in a cave we don't even know why how can we combat it are you ready we're ready to go everyone with me everyone online you're good all right someone back there when i said online they said yep so they're on their phone and here it's awesome First thing is this, stop believing someone else's movie. Stop believing someone else's movie. Now, I I know you're you're like, what? Since we already talked about the year 2004, 2004, I, I got thinking, I was like, well, what, what was a movie in 2004? And, and one that probably... Most of you, if you're a moviegoer at all, you probably went and watched this movie or you've seen it along the, the, you know, your life or uh, let's say this, if you're a romantic person or you even want to impress a lady in your life, you probably went to this movie and it was The Notebook. Does anyone know The Notebook? Uh, and so I, I got thinking of that, like I, I know The Notebook. Uh, that was one of Paige's favorite movies and you know, it was, oh, it was touching. It was so beautiful. 
And uh, it was romantic, and uh, it, it was. I, I mean, it was a great story. If you're ever watching a great story, and uh, just uh, one of those movies that we would go to, or you would watch, and you would spend, uh, you know, an hour and a half, a couple of hours of your week, or your month, or whatever it might be, and, and you would go to a movie. And, and I got thinking about this, that, that a lot of us, if you go back 20 years ago, we would go and we would watch a movie, and and, and I know you don't want to admit it today, and, and even some of you men, you don't want to admit it, but we would go to these movies, and all of a sudden, we'd get to the end of the movie, and we would leave, and we would have some different emotions, wouldn't we? Like, like you, no matter who you were, you were like, oh, that was so awesome. I, I wish my love story was like that. Oh, when I'm 90 and die, I'm going to die beside my spouse. And it's going to be so beautiful. And you, you had all these things. And, and no matter what movie you would go to, if it kind of had romance to it or whatever it might be, you would end up leaving. And, and some of you would actually deal with some emotions that you would start to compare your life to the movie. You, you, you would actually, it would turn around and some of you would battle and you'd be like, my, my life's not like that. But what happened 20 years ago is we, we had the ability that we, we could realize and we could process in our minds like, oh, wait a minute, that was Hollywood. That, that wasn't real. That, that you know, I, I'm now going to leave the movie theater. I'm going to go home to my family. I'm going to go through my week and, and through my life. And I'm able to process and realize that that wasn't reality. The problem is today we are on social media all the time. And we constantly are comparing our life to someone else's movie. Or, or we have said it before, someone else's highlight reel. And we don't have the time and the ability to process and realize, wait a minute, the images that I'm seeing or the video I'm seeing of someone else, that isn't even their reality. That's not their reality, but what can happen in our minds is we start to think, well, my life's not like that. My family's not like that. If I had a life like they had and a job like they had, and if I had this and I had that, then maybe I would be much better off. And I'm just telling you, comparison is a killer. And if in your mind you are constantly comparing yourself, and I'm just telling you, if you're constantly on social media, you can't help but do it. You are going to end up in a cave in your mind. Pre-COVID, people were spending approximately 144 minutes on social media. Now, now, just to compare it, so if you go back before and you went to a movie or you watched a movie, you would spend about 120 minutes watching that movie out of 43, approximately 43,000 minutes in your month. Pre-COVID, I say pre-COVID because all data would tell us that it went extremely higher in the last two years. But pre-COVID, people were spending approximately 144 minutes out of 1,400 minutes in their day on social media. 4,320 minutes a month. I know this is so practical today, but I, I believe that, that God wants to help some of you. Like, there is a reason today on, on your phones, it tells you how long you've been on your phone. Like, even the makers of these devices know it's not good. Like, like even they are saying, like, hey, wake up. Like, this week you were on your phone this amount of time. This isn't good for you. Another way that we come out of this cave in our, our mind when it comes to comparison it, it is this, celebrate others. Look at someone beside you and say, man, I celebrate you today. I, I celebrate you today. That, that I'm, I'm happy for you. I, I'm proud of what God's doing in your life. You see... You, you think about it, you're like, well, how is that really? So many of you, you constantly are comparing your life to other people, and you're never celebrating other people's lives. Oh, you might click like, but when you click like, you're like, oh. <laughs> and you know it. You know it. 
celebrate others. Actually take time, celebrate them. Romans says this, 12, 15, it says, Be happy with those who are happy, or rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. Like, when was the last time you genuinely celebrated someone else and celebrated the person that got what you wanted? Ooh, that's tough. But seriously, when was the last time that you were like, man, I wanted that promotion. I was in competition with that other person, but actually when they got it and you did it, did you really celebrate them? Like from your heart that you know what? Like how would I feel if I got that promotion? How, how would that make me feel? I would be pretty excited. And, and so you got to realize that and say, you know what? I am so happy for you. Celebrate other people. Another one is this. Be filled with gratitude. Filled with gratitude gratitude this is a subject that's throughout the bible and i could have just pulled numerous verses or anyone but one in particular i I picked psalm 103 says let all that i am praise the lord may i never forget the good things he does for you're going to get out of the cave in your mind and if you're going to stop living in comparison you need to learn to be filled with gratitude i'm looking today there's a bunch of people in this room right now that means you had the ability to snow blow shovel hire someone to snow blow or shovel for you whatever it might be like everyone that's in this room you have something thankful something to be thankful for today and those online, like right now, you, you have the ability to, to be in church online. Like, that, that's something to be thankful for. If you constantly are comparing your life to other people and all the time saying, well, look what they have, look what, what she has, look what he has, look at the promotion they got, look at the life they have, I'm telling you, you will never, ever experience contentment. But if you can live a life filled with gratitude, it will change everything. My kids are crazy today. Yeah, you have kids. I didn't get that promotion. Yeah, but you have a job. Like, What is it that you need to be thankful for today? I, I want everyone, just, just take, take a moment in, in your minds. In this room, close your eyes. Maybe online, close your eyes for a minute. And I want you right away, just think of four things that you're thankful for. Be filled with gratitude. The last thing is this. Murray, come on back so I know to wrap up. We'll probably go a little deeper in this in a couple weeks. But this probably is is my go-to help when I'm battling with comparison. I, I have to constantly remind myself of this. A lot of times for me, it, it's alone time, but it's not alone time where I'm just like, woe is me. It's more alone time, me and God. And, and I'm pouring my heart out to God and just allowing the Holy Spirit to, to speak into my heart. And, and so I, I wanted to share this one today, and, and it would be this. Run your race. Run your race. Hebrews 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Now, I know a lot of times we read those verses. And what can happen if you've grown up around church? You kind of read those verses and right away you kind of sort of go to like your big sins. Like, oh yeah, like I can't do that. And and if I could end this in my life or, you know, that addiction, if I could get rid of that. Or, or, you know, like, like, yeah, I could run the race if, if I just got rid of these things. But what if the sin that he's talking about was maybe a sin called comparison envy 
or pride. What if the sin wasn't sins that we classify as big sins, but what if the sins was actually just the stuff that takes us into a cave in our mind and then we end up not actually running our race? It says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. you know the beautiful thing about God? The beautiful thing about your life is God has set the race before you. God didn't call you to run someone else's race. God didn't say, hey, I got this one race and and there's only one finisher and and only one person's going to get the prize. So so you need to look to your left and look to your right and see what they're doing and, and, and figure out, like, if I can run in their lane, everything will be good. No, God has a race marked out for you. Your life. You weren't called to run someone else's race. You, you weren't called to live a life someone else is living. You were called to live your life. The Bible is so very, very, very clear that, that one day when life on earth is over, we will stand before our maker. And what is the one thing that all of us, those that have ever read the Bible before, or parts of the Bible, you probably know this, but what is the one thing that we want? our Savior to say to us when we enter into eternity, well done, a good and faithful servant. You read the Bible, it's not the story of like, well done, you did it. Like, you got here before everyone else. Hey, good job. You saw what they were doing and you gave them a little bump out of the race so you could get ahead of them. Like, you figured out the lane that was the best lane to run and you ran it. No. Well done, my good and faithful servant. The Bible's so very clear that the prize church is Jesus. The prize is Him. And we're to keep our eyes on Him. And I'm just telling you today that if you could ever really get to the place that you realize, God, you have a race for me to run. And my job isn't to look to the left or the right or the left. My my job is to just look ahead to you. And God, whatever race you've called me to run, God, whatever trials I face in my race, God, whatever, whatever I receive in my race or whatever I don't receive in my race, God, whatever it is, I am gonna run my race. We find out in scripture, you know, it, it it's one of these crazy things. The Bible is very clear. We, we're so we're so earthly minded, and even the comparison thing. Like, like what are we really comparing? Like, we compare ourselves to other people, but we don't actually know like their life. And as you study Scripture, you realize that. That God's given us all different gifts, different talents, different lives. We, we don't know why. I mean, Jesus told the story when he was here on earth about the master that gave the, the servants talents and told them to go. And they got all different things. They, they could have just stood there after and be like, why did I only get this and he got that? But Jesus was very clear. It's not about what you've received, but it is what you do with it. And I'm just telling you, you can look at someone else's life and compare all you want, but you don't know what they're doing with what God's given them. But you do know what you're doing with what God's given you. You are so uniquely and wonderfully made that no one, no one else can run the race God has for you. God, in this room today, and Lord, every room that is a part of our service today, I I pray right now that your Holy Spirit would fill every room and God, every heart.
God, we see it all the way back in the beginning and we see it today. That the enemy of our soul loves to get our mind on other people and loves to get us to compare. But Jesus, I pray today through the power of your Holy Spirit, God, that the believers would be freed from the spirit of comparison. Lord, as we do what we need to do practically, Lord, you will step in and you will do what only you can do spiritually in our lives, in our hearts, and in our minds. I hope today's talk was encouraging to you. And hey, we would love to hear from you of how God spoke to you through this talk. And again, you can message us on Facebook. Make sure to like and follow us while you're there. Hope City F10. You can reach out on our website, myhopecity.cc. And don't forget, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with all the content coming out. And we are excited to see how God is going to continually move through your life through this. Love you guys. Have a great day.